Hello ho there, neighbor. You know, I've got some big news for you. And of course, you're looking for the titular story, right? Okay, so a senator out of Missouri by the name of Josh Hawley has introduced a bill that may move to ban loot boxes and pay to win microtransactions from any game that is played by minors. This includes, but of course, is not limited to the Destiny franchise, Apex Legends, PUBG, Fortnite, and even Candy Crush is in, isn't safe from this legislation. Any game that has an ESRB rating of Mature on Down is going to be affected by this ruling. The only rating that will not be affected would be adults only, which requires that you be 21 and older in order to, in order to purchase it. However, the biggest argument against loot boxes is whether it constitutes underage gambling. Be simply because of that, EA had its own potential issue. However, the only reason they were able to overcome theirs with whatever their soccer game is called is was by introducing the odds of winning any particular prize in their loot box pool. However, one, one thing that those companies do have in their favor is that a few different countries have already ruled in that favor saying that microtransactions don't constitute gambling. However, this may not exactly fall in that same category. In the event that this law follows through, then this would this would potentially change how quite a few different companies well they not only how they build their games but how they really rank their business structure because quite a few of these rely on that freemium model or the the loot boxes in general in order to make their money the one of the few things that they have working in their favor is a few different countries including Ireland, Germany, Sweden, Denmark, Australia, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom have all said that loot boxes are not gambling. So you, they do have quite a bit in their favor. However, it may not be enough in this case. So if you guys think that loot boxes are the are going to be the end of the world for you and they cost too much money and they're trying to take all your money you know comment down below so just in case you didn't have enough awesome in your life there is an upcoming puzzle game narrated by our very own patrick stewart seen here of course so this game is set to release on may 21st on both the rift s the Rift and the Quest. This game is of course set to be a launch title for the system, which many of you have probably already pre-ordered, but just in case you didn't feel like checking it out, you get his very, very impressive voice to listen to all the while, while enjoying your mystery narration story puzzle game. This next piece of news isn't quite as awesome. So Apple, the tech giant that it is, is working on a virtual reality headset due to be released at some point next year. There is no information due yet. However, not only will the price, release date, and all the other related information likely come in an upcoming press conference, one thing we can also keep in mind is that Apple may not, in fact, be the last tech giant to try to jump into this virtual reality space. It is growing ever larger and larger as time goes on, and we could likely see even more people jump into this space as time goes on. So I, I would not 
honestly, yeah, it, it'd be a little tough to be able to not think that there would be more people jumping in. The next big piece of news is all about Google, if you didn't already see this coming. So they are, right now, they don't have a whole lot of virtual reality stuff in the pipeline, as hard as it may be to believe. Right now, the biggest thing they have going for them is the Daydream, which unfortunately is not even going to be supported on their upcoming phone the Pixel 3. So it, it's kind of hard for me to believe that they are pushing more for the software when their own software isn't, go isn't going to be supported by their own hardware. You, you see the problem there, right? Honestly, I feel like it's like the words they're saying need to be taken with a grain of salt. One of the biggest things that they talk about during this press briefing is about YouTube VR and Tilt Brush. While they are working on a little bit of software here and there when it comes to outside competitors, they don't really have a whole lot for their own personal projects which it, it's a little strange what the more you think about it because they're they've already got the stadia in the pipeline set to be released later this year as well so it stands to reason they, they should they should be working on something in vr since they know they know with as much search traffic goes through their their titular search engine for virtual reality they should know that that's something that they should have been working on like years ago but that's just me that's those are my thoughts and i feel like i've been rambling on for long enough so if you guys liked it let me know if you hated it let me know and as always don't forget to tell me how i'm a horrible person for giving you all this news Ta-ta for now.